Is it possible to call Latvia a failed state? Of course, no. Uh, the country have their own problems, as we mentioned, economic problems. But uh, when the Russian state media or propagandists say that, the, for example, Latvia became the failed state or decaying state because the these problems with uh, country economies, uh, they need to look uh, in their regions, which are um, in a much more uh, worse situation than uh, Latvia regions. Hello, my name is Nicholas Furnival. You are watching an OSW interview. Today I'm talking to Bartosz Chmielewski about Latvia and about how its capital, Riga, dominates the regions. Hi, Bartek. Hi. Today we're going to talk about Latvia, in particular focusing on how its capital, uh, Riga, dominates the regions. So, first of all, I wanted to just say a couple of basics about Latvia. It looks very small on the map, but its territory is more or less the size of Florida or the Republic of Ireland. So we're talking about quite a large country here in terms of territory, but it has quite a small population. Yes, in Latvia lives uh, nowadays something around one million point uh, eight hundred thousand people, mm -hmm. and um, almost half of them, around f from from forty percent to forty five percent, live in the capital region, which means the the um, eight uh, hundred thousand is are inhabitants of of Riga and suburbs. Mm -hmm. All of the country, rest of the country, are less inhabited. There is no other big cities. Um, when I say big cities, I mean the, the cities like, uh, like um, regional uh, centers. Uh, because what's, the, what's the second largest city? Second largest city, is, as far as I know, because the, the number of inhabitants uh, change every every year in Latvia in these smaller towns and cities. But probably it's still Daugavpils. So obviously there's a massive imbalance between the, the population in the capital and outside. How does it look in financial terms? In financial terms, when we look to the regions, um, we see that almost 70% uh, of uh, Latvian GDP is produced in the uh, capital region. Mm -hmm. In Riga and the uh, wealthy suburbs of, of Latvian capital, this 30% are in the rest of the country. And still we need to uh, notice that there is very important places like or infrastructure from the economic point of view like ports uh, on the west uh, Liepai and Ventpils mm -hmm. which also have big impact on the Latvian uh, economy mm -hmm. and we see um, the regions are not so uh, wealthy because the, the as I said the, the most of uh, uh, Latvian economy are produced in the capital region and uh, probably in two or three towns uh, in the west and uh, in the south. Mm -hmm. So how did this happen? What, what, has this imbalance simply always been there or is it due to recent changes? This imbalance, I, I would say that is not nothing new because this imbalance since 19th century, because mm -hmm. uh, uh, Riga was also one of the biggest uh, cities in the um, Tsarist Empire, as far as I remember, among the um, number of inhabitants in the in the um, national census of uh, Tsarist Russia in 1897, that was the sixth city in the whole empire, after the Moscow, Petersburg, Odessa, Ucha, and Warsaw, and also um, at that time Riga was was a big industrial. Um, complex always like be like this even during the um, independent period during the first during the independent Latvian Republic the Riga was the biggest uh, of course it was the biggest city in the country but also dominates Riga dominates on the uh, then, um, to the other parts of the country but this imbalances wasn't so um, big as they are now. Mm -hmm. Because the, this uh, city always was the important part of local imperials. I mean the Russian and Soviet imperium. The Riga was always the, the city 
was important on the scale of all the country and it was developing uh, not in connection with the own region, but like it was part of greater uh, economic drivers uh, from the all the all the uh, Soviet uh, and before the Tsarist Empire. This is that's why Latvia uh, in Latvia, the Riga was always imbalanced towards the rest of the uh, country. Which in general always, I mean, the, the Latvia, which is always was agriculture uh, country, mm-hmm. the main city, the capital, which was the more industrial. There is only the one thing which is new that the differences are nowadays much more uh, bigger than before, and they have uh, um, impact, uh, much bigger impact to the Latvian economy and society. Mm-hmm. I would like to ask why it's if this impact is harmful because the the Latvian economy is doing reasonably well has been doing very well for the last 30 years and having a powerhouse of a capital is generally a good thing so how important is it that the regions are not keeping pace with uh, Riga The main problem are uh, differences in wages Mm-hmm. Also in the conditions of life of people who are not living in the in the capital region. What is most important, the regions, especially the regions in the east and southern east, are getting older and older. Mm-hmm. And uh, you're talking about the the age of the age. people. There. Yeah, yeah. The uh, society is aging. Uh, society mm-hmm. is aging in this uh, in the regions. And next uh, couple of years, I mean, three two decades, maybe they will be the, the people who are able to work, but the um, local communities will have problems with um, manpower mm-hmm. and also the problems with other people who need uh, special care, who need special institutions. I don't know if it's oh, oh, like a daycare for uh, other people. Mm-hmm. And also there's, there will be needed someone who is in the working age who will be working these uh, institutions. Mm-hmm. Also, there will be problems with institutions like schools because there will be less students, uh, less teachers. And together with that, the conditions of life will getting worse and worse. And this is a problem which is, uh, which is or this is a challenge which is needed to face off by our Latvian government. So you're mentioning uh, problems with infrastructure, uh, schools, um, elderly care, hospitals. Would it be possible for people to simply commute for these services? Uh, how is the road system and the public transport network in Latvia? I can uh, say something about the public transport because I'm I'm not the driver I'm not using the uh, the roads when I'm in Latvia but uh, there's also problems with uh, with um, public transport because uh, there is some some cities in the regions that don't have a bus or there's a, a bus uh, once per day or uh, for example um, if any of our listeners will try to uh, commute from the Riga to second largest city Daugavpils by a train mm-hmm. they will uh, see very slow um, and all the train commuting uh, this 200 kilometers for three and a half an hour which is quite long compared to the train systems in the other parts of, of Europe or even Central Eastern Europe. Of course, the, the government and uh, are trying to, to modernize the train network. Also, uh, there is a buses in the country, but as I said, there is uh, regions, towns, small villages, uh, which are, don't have their own uh, road connecting to the Mm, capital or uh, n- next uh, neighboring um, bigger town or a city. And in general, this is the problem of, of Latvia to commute from the one part of the country to other part of the country in relatively good t- time. Mm-hmm. So the solution seems to be to encourage people to return to the regions. Is there a plan from the government to make this happen at the moment? Uh, of course, there is uh, strategies uh, 
and the plans and the perspectives made by um, government, made by um, uh, ministries. But I would say uh, it's problems with implementation of these ideas. And there is a um, few factors which is, uh, which is um, uh, important when we discuss this topic, because uh, uh, in Latvia there is a um, um, very strong or very independent local uh, authorities. The local communities sometimes uh, are led by uh, strong persons mm-hmm. who have their own um, own parties or own political groups. They are ruling their um, their uh, municipalities for many years, like uh, more than 10, sometimes more than 15 years. And they have their own policies, their own plans, and they don't want always to cooperate with central central uh, government. They want to invest in other sectors, uh, not always uh, spend money for road infrastructure or uh, communi- public communication. Also, uh, there is a disagreement between the, um, some of politicians uh, uh, ruling the uh, local communities with the central government. Because, for example, when we look to eastern part of the uh, uh, country, the municipalities are mostly ruled by um, social democratic uh, harmony uh, politicians. This part is... Uh, uh, surrounded by cordon sanitar by the center right uh, or, or ruling in the in the in the country, mm-hmm. and this also have a, a great impact on the on the um, governing of the country because these people don't want to cooperate, uh, um, just simply don't want to cooperate. Mm-hmm. Also, uh, sometimes these regions uh, have. Um, have uh, different uh, views on uh, that how they need to develop or how to they need to earn money. Sometimes they um, have um, economic strategies uh, putting them close to the Russia or Belarus uh, and uh, exchange goods and uh, uh, they uh, also exchange services and uh, have good political ties to the regions which are on the other side of the of the border of the EU border and the last thing as I oh, the EU Russia border yeah EU Russia border i mean that like for example the um, the municipalities near the latvian municipalities near the border sometimes uh, have the ber- better economic um, relations and ties to the regions on the other side of the european border uh, and the last factor is some kind of self-fulfilling prophecy because um, these problems which are uh, nowadays are stopping the, the possibility to people coming back, for example, to, to these regions from, uh, from emigration in the, in the Western Europe or, for example, going back from the uh, Riga to the, um, their, uh, their uh, region. This problem, when these problems are getting uh, stronger, stronger, it's uh, it will be even harder to make us to find a solution to to make a changes in this in these regions, for example, like in the east, or for example, uh, municipalities from the west of the country uh, who base their uh, economy for uh, only for one. Uh, Leg, like uh, they are based on the transit uh, uh, from the east to the west, from Russia or Belarus to the ports and then to the Western Europe. This municip- municipalities, if they will not change something or uh, in their uh, strategies, they will be uh, have uh, much more uh, problems, and they will be the situation will go uh, go worse and worse and worse. Mm-hmm. You mentioned demographics Mm -hmm. and people leaving the country. It's huge numbers of Latvians left Latvia. Is there the potential to persuade them to come back? And would this partly solve this problem of... Because I I believe that uh, a large um, 
a disproportionate amount of people left from the regions. So could this, in fact, be a solution rather than a problem? I hope so, because uh, um, this is only one solu- one solution, or there's two solutions, but uh, there's this other one. It's impossible, uh, I think, for Latvia, because uh, to fulfill this uh, demographic gap in the regions, the country, the state, need to attract uh, rare immigrants, people who will come back from the immigration, or need to attract the immigrants uh, from the third countries. Uh, when we talk about dem- demographics to to present to our listeners uh, how these uh, waves of emigrations uh, were serious in Latvia, when we look onto the um, data from um, beginning of, of uh, uh, independence, like uh, from the 90s uh, or late 80s, in Latvia lived two and a half millions, around two and a half. And nowadays we have 1.8. This is kind of 700,000 people who which leave the country. Of course, uh, in the 90s, um, part of these people were Russians uh, or uh, Russian speakers mm-hmm. who go back to to Russia, to Ukraine, to Belarus. Mm-hmm. But there's the serious and the biggest uh, wave of uh, emigration was after the the um, financial crisis of 2008, 9, 10. And these people um, are now living abroad. And I think they are not want to go back because uh, when I'm following, when I'm the data from the um, Latvian Statistical Bureau, I see the, um, um, there is an amount of people who are coming back every year. But it's so small that it can't change the uh, trends, demographic trends. And also, I'm not sure, but uh, I can bet that the um, vast majority of these people who are uh, coming back, they are coming back to Riga, not to the regions. Mm -hmm. And uh, it will be very difficult to persuade people to try to settle their lives back in the towns uh, in the Zemgale or in the Latgale because it's easier to live in the capital uh, or it's easier to live uh, in the suburbs of capital mm-hmm. when they are thinking about going back home, going by, back to their fatherland. Mm-hmm. During COVID, many people started to work from home. Is this possible? Is the infrastructure... Um, of the internet, uh, broadband, wireless internet, is this is this an acceptable standard for people to live in Daugavspils or Ventspils and um, and function financially? Uh, I would say yes. Uh, to be honest, I never checked the the quality of, of uh, networks um, in the in the countryside of, of Latvia. But uh, among the statistics, among the uh, the data is that Baltic states, in general, Latvia, Lithuania, and Estonia are the countries which are uh, have very good broadband internet, and um, I think it's possible to to going back to the to to, to the countryside, to the to the fatherland, or um, in general, going back to the countryside and uh, work from from there. Um, but as far as I looking uh, on the uh, statistical data, slash and statistical data, I didn't notice that trend that it was a big wave of people coming back and uh, and uh, uh, working, for example, in in Berlin or in London uh, from from their own countries. It's possible because uh, even I uh, have uh, in Poland friends who. Do like this, but I didn't saw any trends in in Latvia. Like maybe there's some sort of people who are coming back, but it's not seen in the in the data. Mm-hmm. So also, when we talk about the demography and people who are coming, uh, and probably they are working and uh, or uh, learning um, on the on the websites, but via the internet. Uh, there are Ukrainians who came to Latvia last year. They have a positive um, positive impact on the Latvian demography because it's the first year 
uh, the last year, the 2000, 2022, it's the first year since the uh, independence when the Latvia have positive, positive uh, demographic indicators. Mm -hmm. And maybe this is the good sign for, for Latvia because there will be um, some new people who will uh, want to uh, maybe live not only in the, on the capital, but also in the in the other uh, towns and cities, for example, in the eastern part of the country, where there are also the Russian speakers, and uh, it will be maybe easier to settle for a few years for this uh, asylum seekers from Ukraine. Mm -hmm. It's possible that uh, next year's also that will be the waves of asylum seekers. Most likely from Ukraine. Yeah, most from Ukraine. And... Uh, Maybe it will be a changing factor for the Latvian society, who will could be became uh, more uh, open for uh, for uh, immigration to their country, and um, maybe that influx of of asylum seekers will uh, change Latvian society stance towards the the problems and. Uh, also, in the not far future, the government could uh, be any government could be more open to migration, external migration to Latvia, which also could be a, a solution for problems of, of the country. Mm -hmm. So before we go, you, you mentioned the context of the war in Ukraine. The country is not incredibly small but it's underpopulated and this is getting worse. Is it a security threat? Is Latvia able to defend its entire territory? I hope uh, it will be, but uh, the, uh, like Latvia and all other Baltic states are uh, mostly based their own security policy on NATO mm -hmm. and cooperation with the Western allies. In the three Baltic states, also in Latvia, there is ally forces. Uh, especially the, the major force, uh, foreign force in, in Latvia are uh, Canadians who, um, who stay in the Adazi, near the, uh, near the, uh, in the base Adazi, near the capital uh, of Latvia. And also government developing new bases, new uh, training fields for additional uh, forces from allies. And um, Latvian also other Baltic states need the uh, um, need the presence of uh, NATO forces, and they will be able to defend themselves, but with the uh, help of the uh, allies, because there are small countries, and in general, the main threat to Latvia, also Lithuania and, and Estonia, uh, the main threat uh, are, is Russia, which is many times bigger and uh, these countries uh, i mean the baltic states uh, need the uh, uh, assistance from the other nato states and they get this uh, this assistance uh, when we look how the situation looks 10 years ago before the crimea and uh, before nato forces appear uh, in the in the region as an enhanced forward presence. The situation was m much more uh, worse. I would say that 10 years ago, these countries wouldn't be able to defend themselves. But now Latvia modernizes their uh, armed forces and also have um, mm, allies on their territory. And I would say the country is secure as the all NATO countries are, are secure. Because if any crisis or war appear in the region, all of the NATO countries are will be involved. I have one final question. Uh, we hear a lot about the Baltic states in Russian propaganda, and Latvia has been described in Russian propaganda as a failed state. Uh, so we've been discussing one of its problems today. Is it possible to call Latvia a failed state? Of course, no. Uh, the country have their own problems, as we mentioned, economic problems, but uh, it's still a country which is uh, in the European Union. There is country which economy and maybe and the um, conditions of life fulfill in the, this European standards. And when the Russian state media or propagandists say that, the, for example, Latvia became the failed state or decaying state because of the, these problems with uh, country economies, 
uh, they need to look uh, in their regions, which are um, in a much more uh, worse situation than uh, Latvia regions. Mm-hmm. No, I would say that, um, first of all, this, this is a lie. And also what is important, that, uh, this Russian li- lies, r- Russian propaganda, in general, are based on the rule of putting the sum of true with the big basin of false. And this is the case of this. Like they they uh, put some indicators or um, some um, situation without the context and put them in the in the bigger context, which is in general false uh, story. Okay, so thank you very much for that answer, and thank you very much for the discussion, Bartos. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching this OSW interview. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe to our channel to keep up to date with all future content.